Hey, fellow ZBrushers, thanks for joining me again um, on my YouTube channel. Forgive me, uh, I've had a cold for the last few days, so bear with me. Um, hopefully my voice will hold up through this tutorial. Uh, anyway, without further ado, I wanted to talk uh, about scaling and hollowing parts. Uh, this is something that a lot of people are interested in because they want to 3D print things that they make in ZBrush and there's a couple reasons um, obviously scaling is important because you want to export files out of ZBrush or out of your processing program at the right size uh, for the sake of this tutorial I'm only going to be using um, ZBrush uh, and the other thing, uh, hollowing parts. Um, hollowing parts will save you money because no matter what printer you are using, if you can create a hollow part, you're obviously going to be using less build material. Um, in my case, uh, I primarily use a Stratasys Eden, which has like a um, kind of like a jelly-like solid support material that you hose off, like blow off the build with a power washer, basically. Um, and hollowing parts is something that I do frequently because it, the resin, the uh, resin that the printer uses is far more expensive than the support material. So anywhere I can um, use the support material and not the resin, I save money. So. Uh, yeah, we'll go over these two things. Um, uh, the relationship between the two, scaling and hollowing parts, is important because you can't scale out of... Um, how can I put this? Um, the, the scaling factor in ZBrush, let's just say we're going to work on this um, on this cylinder here. Um, if you go up to your, let's make it a poly mesh first, but if you go up to your 3D um, print exporter and you update your size ratios, it gives you this, in, in millimeters, it gives you this uh, 2 on X, Y, and Z axes, meaning this thing is 2 millimeters tall, 2 millimeters wide, and 2 millimeters long. So if you... If you wanted to hollow this thing out um, and create like a cup shape with a hollow in here uh, and you did it in ZBrush, um, you would have walls here, like the walls of your cup would be so thin it would be ridiculous. And then when you scaled it up and exported it out of ZBrush, you would have no way of knowing exactly how how thick those walls were. You, you'd be playing a guessing game. You might be able to get the scale factor. Like, let's say you wanted your cup to be, um, you know, let's say like six inches tall. But if you wanted like a really accurate measurement on the wall of the cup, uh, once you scaled it up, you'd have you'd have trouble knowing exactly how thick those walls were. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to do something that I thought you guys would enjoy a little bit more um, than just making a cup and scaling it and hollowing it. Um, it's something that uh, a lot of people, you want to sculpt figures, right? You want to sculpt collectibles. You want to sculpt action figures. So I figured we would use... Um, uh, a male body, and we'll just use the um, the Nick Z um, average male that comes with ZBrush. <clears throat> um, so uh, let's just get started, and we'll start with scaling. So um, I'm just gonna change this material. And I'm going to talk about scaling. Let's isolate him on his own canvas by cloning him and selecting the clone tool. 
So um, let's see, how do we start here? Okay, so say you've got a commission and your client wants you to, you've got two parameters. He wants you to hollow out the sculpt and he wants this character that you're working on to be, uh, let's say, a quarter scale figure because that is like right now seems to be the most popular scale that collectibles companies are working in. So how the heck do you make him a quarter scale figure? Okay, I have um, broken down the math for doing this, and of course this is not like uh, the absolute um, flawless way of measuring and calculating scale. Everybody, every client that you work with is going to have their own parameters, so I'm going to give you like a very general idea of, of how to do this and get it you know, close to industry average standard. Um, so let's say uh, quarter scale. So the average Greek classic proportion has the male head being, um, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the average figure being eight heads tall. So that means you're counting eight heads, eight head lengths in the height of the figure. Um, so what you need to do is a little bit of math and basically how you do that is you say the I'm gonna say again like a heroic male like an athletic male like we use a baseball player as an example let's just say he's six foot three because you don't want to sculpt Thor and have him be five foot seven right um, no offense to short people uh, <laughs> um, so six foot three, so that would be 75 inches tall and you want him to be an eight head classic Greek figure. That would mean that he, uh, needs each head in scale needs to be 60 millimeters tall and the entire figure would be 18.75 inches. Okay, um, I've done a little bit of math, and I apologize. I'm going to – I don't want to have to jump back and forth between standard and uh, metric units. Um, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to go with metric units because I think that's what most of the uh, developed world uses. Um, I know that there are a few countries like the United States that still use standard measurements, but honestly, metric breaks down um, much easier. So that's usually what I default to uh, in ZBrush and processing programs. <clears throat> um, first of all, uh, let's make sure that this guy is an eight-head figure. I think he is, but let's double check. So I'm going to... Um, use the Z plugin to measure him, and right now he is 182 millimeters on the um, Y axis, on the long axis. So let's measure him. I'm just going to drag my transpose tool down here and just get an, a, you know, an approximate um, measurement. It looks like his head is 24 millimeters, so you divide 24 into what we just measured, that 182, and that gives us 7.58. So, uh, as an experiment, a scaling experiment, I'm actually going to scale his head down and make him an eight head figure. So I apologize if this is um, a little bit boring, but hopefully you'll be able to pick up some stuff from it. <clears throat> And just to reverse that math, 
He's 182 mil, uh, yeah, 182 millimeters tall right now in ZBrush. So uh, if we divide 182 by 8, we want his head to be 22.75 millimeters tall to be an accurate uh, 8 head classic type Greek figure. 22.75. So that's real close. I'm just going to leave it there for the sake of the tutorial. His head might look a little bit small, but um, take it up with the Greeks, not me. <laughs> uh, actually, you know, generally, I don't always use eight head figures for, for my sculpts. I actually do usually shoot like at around seven, three quarters, 7.8 or so around there. Um, but hey, I, like I said, this is what the Greeks came up with and who am I to argue with them, right? Anyway, at this point, he's an eight head figure for all intents and purposes. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not going to scale the whole thing up in ZBrush for the sake of the tutorial. I'm just going to use the head. And what we calculated earlier was that um, to be an eight head figure at quarter scale, his head needed to be 60 millimeters. So now let's imagine we're exporting this whole thing out of ZBrush as a scaled up quarter scale figure. Um, I'm not going to do that, but just for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to say like we're we want to scale the head up and export that. So we'll cut his head off, and I'm going to do that just by dragging this mask. Well, let's subdivide him a couple times so we have a little more geometry to work with here. <clears throat> um, just use the transpose tool to create like a nice. Um, uh, mask on there. We'll sharpen the mask up and split it. <clears throat> Whoops. Oh yeah, I forgot to bake the layers. This um, this standard body that Nick made for ZBrush has layers baked into it. Um, so you got to get rid of those before you start modifying this bad boy. <clears throat> and now of course it's like going crazy here that's all right screw, screw the transpose tool for masking I get annoyed with that thing sometimes um, I'm just gonna mask loop it and split it that way good good Sharpen it up and split it. I'm going to clone it to a separate canvas. <clears throat> and I'm just going to dynamesh it because who cares? Most of the time when you're working on something, you're going to end up dynameshing it at some point unless you're working on a, you know, a low res game model or something. But for the sake of like working the collectibles industry, I don't know anybody that doesn't use uh, Dynamesh. It's such a handy, like quick fix for stuff. So cool, good. He's at seventy-seven thousand active points. I'm just gonna like soften up this edge because I don't like looking at it. <laughs> um. Anyway, so. Uh, measuring the head, I'm measuring from the top of his cranium, right? I think that's what it's called. Uh, the top of his skull down to the bottom of his chin. And like I said in my previous tutorial, I like using these um, this bounding box thing on here around the canvas as like a, a guide to line stuff up in my ortho views. So that's what I'm doing. Um... It's real close. Like I said, we want this guy to be um, 
60 millimeters tall for a quarter scale head. The head needs to be 60 millimeters. And right now it's at 22. Um, I know I said 22.75 for um, this particular instance. That was, to repeat myself, that was a quarter scale head of a um, 75 inch tall male um, at an eight head in an eight head glass classic Greek figure. So we want his head to be 60 millimeters tall from the top of his skull to the bottom of his chin. So let's start scaling him up. And I'm just going to use the deformation palette to do that. <clears throat> and forgive me, it's a little bit of guesswork. <laughs> I know a lot, like, I got some comments on YouTube about guys giving me advice to do things quicker using plugins and whatnot. Um, I, I do that sometimes, but I've had a couple bad experiences with plugins, and um, not that I don't trust Joseph Drust or any of those other awesome professionals with ZBrush, but just on a personal level, I go with what works that I don't have to worry about, and this is what works for me, so that's what I'm doing. So uh, I actually kind of nailed it on the f first – no, I didn't. I'm sorry. The whole thing is at 60 millimeters tall. So it's measuring the whole Z tool that I have here from the top of the skull, but it's measuring it down to the bottom of the neck. <clears throat> so I got to scale it up a little bit more. I'm getting close though. Measure it again. All right, that should be that should do it. That's at 60.799. So right now, if we exported his head out of here and printed it, you would have a quarter, an accurately scaled quarter scale head for an eight head tall figure in which the figure, if you scaled it up, multiplied it by four, it would be... Um, 75 inches tall, a six foot three male. Uh, in metric units, it would be 190 centimeters if it was a real male figure. Um, at quarter scale, he'd be 18.75 inches, which is. Uh, let me do some math. Um, if we, I'm <clears throat> sorry, uh, I had to pause it there. If we measured, um, if we scaled that uh, quarter scale figure at, he, if he's, if the quarter scale figure is 18.75 inches, and we multiply it by the um, standard measuring unit, um, or I'm sorry, the metric measuring unit, um, it's 2.54 centimeters in an inch. Your quarter scale figure, if he were standing straight up, would be f about 47 and a half centimeters tall. Um, just an FYI, at the end of the video, I'm going to post like a still frame of all of my scaling factors for um, this uh, size figure in 1 8 scale, 1 6 scale, quarter scale, and 1 3rd scale. So you can kind of check yourself and, and look. I know I'm spouting off like so many numbers, and I apologize. All of us artists kind of suck at math, right? I never thought I'd have to do so much math to figure this stuff out. So I'm going to, for your sake, I'm going to post like a still image of all of these scaling factors with the measurements broken down so it's not so confusing. But hopefully you've been able to follow me so far. Um, anyway, at this point, this dude's head is 60 millimeters tall, and I'm happy with calling that a quarter scale heroic size figure. That's pretty much it for scaling. Um, what you would do at this point is export him into your processing program, and of course I use NetFab, and you'd create a scaling factor to accurately scale the other parts out of um, net f or out of ZBrush into NetFab, and if you want me to, if that's too confusing just to say it, it's something that I could go through with you at some other point uh, if you wanted me to. Um, again, it's more like boring, tedious math 
stuff, but it's extremely valuable to know, especially because um, a lot of guys just sculpt in ZBrush and they just send the process, uh, the I'm sorry, they just send their Z tool to um, a print um, company and then they rely on everybody else to do their scaling and processing for them. And that's not what you want to do, is it? No, you want to have control over everything from beginning to end. Plus, it's valuable. I mean, how cool would it be for, you know, a client to say, oh, sculpt the, the you know, the Z tool for me. And when it's done, you can come back and say, hey, you know what? For a little bit more money, I can do all this other stuff too. So why not learn it, right? It's all valuable. Everything you know makes you a more potent artist. So anyway... <laughs> I'm kind of rambling here, but I think it's important. Um, this head is now 60 millimeters, and you could export it to NetFab, and it would print at quarter scale. The end, right? Okay, well then, the other thing that people wanted to know about <clears throat> was uh, hollowing parts. Because, like I said at the beginning of the tutorial, you can save money um, by printing um, with hollow uh, parts, the other issue, too, is that a lot of print companies, like, sh I know a lot of people are using Shapeways, they have, like, minimum um, tolerances for printing, and I know, like, I've heard two millimeters being tossed around a lot, and my argument about this is, uh, it totally depends on the printer you're using, because I would trust my Eden at work to print something that had a, you know, a two millimeter thickness, far more than I would print uh, um, an FDM printer to print at two millimeters. It's just, it's two completely different processes of printing and the uh, material jet printers and even like SLA printers are much stronger than fused deposition modeling that you get from a filament printer. I think I have all those terms right, but anyway, the like material jet printers like the one we run at work the Eden a two millimeter wall thickness on that printer is going to be much stronger than something that you'd get out of your standard like Airwolf or MakerBot filament printer so that's really like I don't have the 100 percent accurate answer for like everybody's individual needs for their printer and their own printing purposes. All I can tell you is that to get um, the measurements that you want accurately, you've got to scale first. Because like I was saying at the beginning of the tutorial, you could make that like that cylinder that I was playing with, you could make you could export that out of ZBrush like, you know, hollowed out or however you want it and print the cup at like a six inch height only to find out that your wall thickness on the cup might be less than two millimeters because you tried to hop, you know, you made it too, you just made it too thin in ZBrush. So you've got to scale first and then measure your wall thickness. So that's what we're going to do now. And just by like, for the sake of it, I guess kind of like out of pure interest here, let's measure this ear, right? Okay. This ear is 14, 15 millimeters tall. Um, just go around the Z tool and just measure random stuff using your transpose lines. The nose is 9.3 millimeters wide. The eye socket is 2.4 by uh, like 6 millimeters. The back of the, the ear right here to make sure we're on the ear is giving me like this area right through here on the ear is giving me two millimeters now again that's something you're gonna have to guess with kind of like you're gonna have to use the parameters that shapeways or whoever you're else is using like they're gonna give you those parameters but at least now you know like on your quarter scale head that that like two millimeter thickness on the ear there is gonna fall within who, you know, that acceptable two millimeter range. Okay, so let's hollow this head out. I'm going to give you two um, examples of how to hollow stuff. Um, the first one is probably the quickest, like, kind of 
I don't know if you'd call it sloppy. It's something that I don't use much because it creates like a hole in the bottom of the part. Um, but uh, before we do that, let's just, to be thorough and clean, let's go to modify topology. Let's weld all your points and close any existing holes. Let's go to polygroups and group visible because we dynameshed it and we don't any want any like weird stuff going on. Okay, so now to hollow this thing out, um, the first way of doing it, quick and easy, but a little bit uh, questionable, I think, anyway. Um, well, anyway is questionable, really, but the first, anyway, regardless, the first way here. Um, you have this, like, sh uh, shell thickness slider here. I'm going to bump it up to, like, six. And I don't really know. The other people that are more experienced with this may tell me that this has, like, a an accurate measurement meaning, but I don't know. It seems kind of arbitrary to me. It's just a number that you slide up and down that determines your wall thickness, but I don't know if it uh, really accurately can give you a millimeter, uh, you know, metric or standard wall thickness. So, but anyway, let's get the thing hollow first. So to do it, um, what you want to do is grab something, an, another uh, sub-tool, and just for the sake of simplicity, let's use this uh, insert cylinder uh, brush here. Sorry, I had to pause it. I um, figured out I was doing something wrong here. I, w I couldn't get it to work. I had uh, display properties double highlighted, and that won't work because what you need to do is drag a piece of geometry on here that has inverted normals. Um, and so you do that by holding Alt. Drag your geometry on there, and that creates um, a piece of geometry with inverted normals, and that will allow you to create the hole in the mesh and create the shell. So drag that on there, remove your uh, mask, make sure you're in Dynamesh mode, and hit Create Shell. So there you can see that we've got a hollowed out part um, and for the sake of showing you guys um, it did drop my resolution down but that's something that you can play with in the Dynamesh slider here uh, but anyway just to show you that we've got um, a hollow part cut the top of his head off and there you can see there's you know one part inside of the other pretty cool right and really that's all there is to it uh, <clears throat> so as far as like wall thickness goes remember this guy's he's a seven or I'm sorry 60 millimeter tall head so if you were to print this right now the way it is um, let's measure the the wall thickness here if you were to print this the way it is right now these walls would be about five millimeters thick, which is plenty. That's like perfect. Even Shapeways couldn't turn you down for that. But again, that wall thickness is something that you've got to play with with this thickness slider and you know make sure your part is scaled accurately so that when you export it, you know you're printing what you've got in ZBrush. Um, so that's it for that technique. I'm just going to back up here. Just hit Control Z a few times. And I'm going to show you the way that I normally do it because I don't like that hole that it creates at the bottom of the, the mesh. It just, it, it annoys me. <laughs> so a lot, a lot of you might find my way of doing this a little bit stupid, but I'll just show you. It works for me. It's never let me down. Um, so... It doesn't create as accurate a wall like all the way through like the way I'm about to do it the wall thickness varies a little bit but it doesn't have that annoying hole in the bottom so maybe there's a, a solution to that and somebody else you know could show me that would be cool you'd be helping out everybody else that wanted to know too but um, anyway I'll just show you how I do this the other way it's basically like um, creating 
those boolean keys that we did in that other tutorial it's the same process so what I want to do is create a shape that fits the inside of the head um, as accurately as possible so I'm just gonna duplicate this and um, turn transparency on and I'm going to scale the inner part down um, quite a bit enough that it'll fit inside the other head and then I'm going to move it into position here with transparency on you can see like you know where you need to like move things around a little bit um, and I also what I'll also do uh, I'm gonna say that's close enough but what I'm also going to do I'll turn transparency off I'm gonna change the color of one of these so that I can see like really obviously where the interior mesh is poking through and it's you know it's apparent right away and because we don't really care about the interior um, mesh if I can get it highlighted here um, just smooth the heck out of it um, actually you can just dynamesh it again like make it super low res because it doesn't matter it's only serving as a boolean maybe not that low but I'd say that's good there's nothing wrong with that all it's got to do is create a boolean for it to hollow this out um, and now I can't see it poking through anywhere it's super simplified um, the other thing I do that I find interesting is I turn um, to make sure I don't have any tolerance or clearance problems I'm gonna turn um, the uh, poly frame on here because sometimes you can see the poly frame even when um, like if you've got the two different poly paint colors turned on sometimes turning the poly frame on makes it even more apparent so I just double check it you know it makes it more apparent where you've got tolerance or clearance issues and sure enough I can see a few spots here where it's poking through or maybe just too close for comfort so in this instance I'm gonna turn symmetry on and just like mash the heck out of this thing until all the whoa <laughs> still have my insert cylinder turned on um, I just gave him some gauges for his ears I'm going to mush this thing inside his head so that I am absolutely guaranteeing myself that I'm not going to have any weird interference when I create this boolean and that should do it I don't see it sticking through anywhere so we'll just double check on this mesh that's what it looks like now that's fine turn that sucker back on and just look through it again real quick just for the sake of showing you you can see where it sits inside the head and that's fine perfectly acceptable okay so now we're gonna do our boolean function here and we're not gonna have a weird hole in the bottom of the mesh like that other uh, way did so I'm going to um, hit this uh, the second group of intersecting circles from counting in from the left this one and this one and I want the the main head the original head to be the part that remains so I leave that one uh, I'm sorry I gotta move I gotta move that one to the top okay so now the head that we want is that the is on the top it's the first sub tool and the subtractive part this uh, this one super low res uh, boolean part is is on the bottom so when we do the boolean function this part is going to be left and this part is going to be subtracted so um, merge them down and go to geometry and I'm going to bump up the resolution a little bit and dynamesh it and hopefully that'll work so you don't know that it worked until you cut this mesh and just see for yourself and look at that it worked so now you've got a hollow mesh with no weird hole in it and just for the sake of showing you 
go to display properties and hit double and there you can see it a little more obviously um, that's it that's all there is to it so now you've got a quarter scale 60 millimeter tall head that is now hollow so to export it to your printer the next thing you do is um, decimate it and export it because you've already scaled it and you should be good to go I uh, hope you enjoyed that I know like that was a bit boring and I rambled on quite a bit but I always try to be thorough and I'm always open to suggestions for uh, new tutorials things that you guys want answered anything that I can do to help I'm down um, just let me know and I'll get back to you guys thanks for joining me again and hope I didn't put you all to sleep <laughs> anyway have a good night ciao